Hi, my name is Becky and I'm working with Watts Gallery and Make Space to create a pocket gallery. And I'd like to show you how to make it right from the beginning all the way to the end. This is a pocket gallery. It shows all the artwork in little windows. And this one has five windows and five pieces of artwork. And I'm going to show you how to make it right now. You start with a long ruler. We're going to need five pieces of paper. So we've got two black and we're going to have three white pieces of paper for our gallery. We need five pieces of cardboard. Now this can be cardboard that's from a cardboard box or a cardboard sheet or even maybe a cereal packet because we can paint the cardboard to whatever colour we want when we're finished. Now these pieces of cardboard are this size because they are a little bit bigger than my A5 piece of paper that will be used for the artwork. You can see there's a little border all the way around my piece of paper and that is quite important for our gallery. So for the anchors for our pocket gallery that go in between the cardboard we need eight of them. So four on one side and four on another side. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next thing we have to do is to connect all our sides of the gallery into our concertina or our zigzag. Using our glue stick we're going to stick our cardboard pieces into our concertina. So we need to line up our pieces of cardboard and paste some glue all the way up to the top and bottom of the cardboard. We then use one of our strips here these are our little bits of paper we've cut and we stick it down we have to rub 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 so that it's nicely firmly down on our cardboard and then we fold it over the next one is going to be on this edge so i'm going to put the cardboard flat like that move another one over it's getting a little bit trickier now because this one on the right hand side is a bit deeper than the one on the left hand side. But we're going to use our glue like we did before right up to the top and down to the bottom. Take a piece of our pre-cut paper and then we make sure that we push this piece of cardboard right up next to the other one. And we rub 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 like we did before and then we fold it over. So as you can see, it's starting to concertina. out nice and flat and put it somewhere to dry. So this piece of artwork uses the black paper and it also uses some chalks. I'm just going to draw some shapes. I'm going to use the chalk on its side to create a big thick line. But I could also use the chalk follow my pattern with a thin line. Let's try a different colour. Let's try purple. I like purple. So we go thin line. We can follow. Oh look at that. It goes all the way down. Maybe we'll do a purple line over here that is the long 
side of the chalk. Maybe we do one this way. It's quite, quite like that. Now green. I wonder where we'll put the green. We can follow those lines down. Maybe put another line up here. Maybe go overlapping. Uh, maybe we do turn it round. We could do some lines going this way. Maybe some lines going that way. Oh, purple chalk wants in. Maybe some dots. Fill up the space. But I know that you guys will be able to think of some patterns. You can also smudge with your finger. And the chalk goes all blurry. But our black paper is acting like a well, chalkboard, a blackboard. And that could be one of our pieces of art for our pocket gallery. So for this piece of art, we're going to do a collage. We need a piece of our A5 normal paper that we looked at at the very beginning of our pocket gallery. And I've got white paper. I mean, it could be any colour you want, really. You could do some black collage, but I'm using white paper for this one. We also need our glue stick. And we also need our scissors. We also need bits of paper that we can use as a collage. These bits here have come from magazines. These are from a birthday present wrapping. You could use newspaper, pictures that you've drawn before that you might want to cut up, or you might have some stickers that you might like to use as well. But basically, there's a very few rules in collage. I think the only rule in collage is that you need to stick things down really well so they stay onto your paper, which is why we've got our glue. I've got some yellow here, which is tissue paper. And the good thing about tissue paper is it's kind of see-through. So if you are building up a picture, you might be able to use tissue paper to go half over it or half under it. You know, that's an idea. You can also tear really easily. And there's some interesting shapes there. So let's do some tearing of my... Oh, look at this one. Very, very pink one. So I'll do some tearing don't have to use the scissors for all your paper. Over here, I've got some bits of magazine. So that's a shopping advert that came in a magazine. I've got a magazine advert here for a magazine for children. I've got a pictures of vegetables here. And we'll look at the different colours. They're quite interesting. Some on the back as well. And then this one I found with a butterfly in it, which I thought was quite nice. So we might cut out the butterfly. So let's start with this one. I wonder, shall I cut the frog out? Maybe that's what I'll do. Using my scissors, I'm going to cut out the frog. got a nice little frog I might cut out that orange actually that's quite an easy thing to cut out so this is using your scissors to do your cutting whereas with the tissue paper we just tore bits into different shapes um, so there are two ways of doing collage you don't have to use scissors you can do just tearing This butterfly just there and then maybe before we start gluing down we could lay out where we would like our paper to go and we could do things at funny angles maybe the frog could go on top of I wonder let's do that like that can you see how we're putting things on top of each other and we're covering our white paper so it doesn't really matter what color paper we start with but 
we can do that Let's move him up there and maybe do that and then maybe we could put that at an angle and then maybe we put some yellow on top of there I quite like that lots of different layers lots of different colors you can also bring some crayons in and do some coloring around the edge or th on top of the pieces of paper but whatever you do it's completely up to you so I think that's about what I would like to use and you can see that there's lots of different colors but some of them are the same and that's actually quite a good way of getting a collage to come together as a picture is to find matching colors so matching greens or matching pinks or matching yellows and oranges and that helps bring the picture together so I'm going to stick this down now so it won't, it won't be exactly the same because I've got to take everything off if I move things off in different directions see how the pink's coming through that's why tissue paper is really lovely for collage and then last but not least our little frog I'm going to stick him down really well so can you see how much glue I'm just sort of moving him around on the glue stick and then I'm going to put him just there, right in the middle okay I've got a yellow crayon I might use as well around the edge I think yellow would look good because we've got some yellow on here already so instead of having just plain white you can colour in round what your your picture is can you see where there's little gaps I'm just going to put some yellow in because I think that look quite nice actually so when you're doing your picture you might actually start with a drawing and then add some bits onto your drawing good thing about collage is you can very quickly make a picture you can do lots of different collages your whole pocket gallery could be collages it's totally up to you really that is an example of doing a collage for our pocket gallery piece of artwork for our pocket gallery will be printing and we're going to use found objects with some squeezy paint some ready mix paint to do our printing okay so we're going to move our print blocks over there these are the things we're going to use and we've got some paint here and we're going to put our prints onto here so the first one I'm going to try is my cork and I could splodge it straight into the paint and then straight onto the paper but what can happen is that you get so much paint on the thing that you want to print that you don't actually get the shape that you actually chose so I'm going to show you a way of doing this which means that you should be able to be able to see the shapes you've chosen printed on I'm using the paintbrush to pop on the orange paint and then I'm going to print some nice big orange circles. Can you see the paint goes on there? And then there's another one over there. And another one up 
there. Oh, that's a good circles. So that's the cork and that's been that shape. So I'm going to move that out of the way because it's a bit gooey. So the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do the frog and I'm going to use my purple onto the bottom of the frog. It's a bit of orange mixed in, but it doesn't matter. You could use a different paintbrush per paint if you want to. I'm going to put my paintbrush down so I can use my right hand. And I'm going to press the frog in right in the middle there. And I let him sit there and then I peel him off. Oh, look at that. That's a good shape. Interestingly, the middle bit doesn't come out. I wonder why that is, but that doesn't matter. That's all part of the joy of printing. You don't always know the shape you're going to have that's going to come up. I'm going to try again. Just turn him round and go the other way. And squeeze him down and then lift him, peel him off. And there's another shape there. Now I'm going to leave him upside down in my print pot. I quite like these Lego bricks, can you see? Because they've got dots. So I could do it that way or I could do it that way. So for this one I'm going to try it that way up. So I'm going to use another paintbrush to put the yellow on my yellow on my Lego brick. Oh, this is a bit it's a bit funny doing that. It's all going down the middle. I don't know how this is going to work out, but let's have a look. Put our yeah. Oh, wow, that looks good. You might have different types of uh, Lego that you can use, and the good thing about ready mix squeezy paint is that it just washes straight off afterwards. See, sometimes you can do more than one print with the pink paint on the Lego. That's great. This time round, I think what I'll do is I'm going to go this, paint that bit. So, you dab the paint on where you need it to be don't know if those will come out but we will definitely get the outside bit which is a rectangle oh yes oh it's brilliant right have another one of those you notice the circles didn't come out because I think they're lower down in the in the block, but that doesn't matter. I'm gonna put that at a different angle. I'm gonna put lots of prints of the oh that like this one. That's really good. Okay, I think I might have some more circles. So this time round I'm going to use my yellow paint. Now I'm going to use my dinosaur from earlier. I think his prints are going to be quite small. Can you see he's only got little feet? I think he's going to be good fun. So I'm going to paint his feet this time with purple paint. And where shall I get him to stand? I think he's going to stand in that rectangle over there. It's a bit squidgy. Oh, look at that! That's brilliant. Right, and another one over here. Might have to squadge him down quite hard. And then over here. You could do, you could get lots of your plastic toys because if they're plastic, they can easily be washed. And you could do lots of different types of footprints. You might have farm animals or other dinosaurs, or you could maybe even use wheels. If you've got any wheels on your cars or your train sets that you could use that'd be quite good I like the idea of that I'm going to put some in the middle there this time I'm actually going to mix some of the orange paint in to that yellow I'll do some more of these but a diff slightly different colour because it's the orange and the yellow mixed together maybe there in the maybe in the corner. I don't want to go over the dinosaur print footprints too much. 
there we are I think we're nearly there one more of these I think I'm going to do it in purple so can you see just on the top of the Lego brick hmm maybe in the middle there and maybe there we go and over there Brilliant! I like that a lot. Okay, so our Lego bricks and our paint move out the way. And our paint brushes. And Mr. Dinosaur, he goes as well. And that is our printmaking piece of art for our pocket gallery. next picture we're going to do for the pocket gallery is a shadow drawing in my studio I'm gonna to have to use my little lamp there it is my lamp is going on and I'm using white paper because it's best to use white paper when you're doing a shadow I'm gonna use a dinosaur this is my dinosaur and he's gonna stand over here on my picture and you can see that he's in the corner of my picture and over here is a fantastic shadow that I can see. And my pencil is nice and sharp and I'm going to trace around this shadow of my dinosaur. And it can be a bit tricky because your hand can actually get in the way of the shadow. So sometimes you have to take your hand away so that your shadow can be seen because it is a bit tricky. Now, sometimes you could add lots of shadows one at a time onto your shadow picture. Or if you want to do just one shadow, you can do that as well. It means tracing around. There's his head. This is very tricky. Now, I'm actually going to change hands. I'm going to trace around. Some of you two might be able be able to use your left and your right hand if you can this is a very very good trick to do because then you don't have a problem seeing the shadow I'm going to take my dinosaur off and you'll be able to see there's a few gaps but you can see the dinosaur can't you and if you wanted to you could draw in there let's just connect it up I don't know whether that was one of his feet let's do that just because I'm going to turn it this way up oh, I quite like that that's brilliant and what you can do with this picture is that you can then color in the shadow if you want to so there's my dinosaur he's now moving away and I now have my picture of my shadow of my dinosaur and I can use the pencil to color in the outline of the shadow that I've just drawn around. Okay, so that is my shadow drawing of my dinosaur and that is me colouring it in with my pencil so that you can see the shadow that I had when the light was pointing at the dinosaur and that is a shadow picture for our pocket gallery The next thing we need to use is our piece of cardboard. We are going to cut triangles and these are going to sit in the corner of the gallery so that our pieces of paper are anchored securely within our gallery. So to make these corners we need the ruler again and what we need to do is measure a square that is four centimeters by four centimeters and then we're going to cut it in half to create our triangles.
once your concertina and your zigzag of cardboard is dry and the paint's dried and the glue's dried you're going to be adding those little triangles that we made into the corners remember the squares that we cut in half you're going to be adding them I'll move it like that into the corners of one side of your gallery so we're not doing both sides for now we're just doing the sides that are all on one top bit here so this one this one this one this one and that one and we need to be really careful with our glue when we're attaching these because if we glue the whole triangle down we won't be able to fit in our artwork so when we're gluing the triangles down we can only glue along the edges of two sides of the triangle like that leaving the long side without any glue at all so there we go now this is tricky again an adult could give you a hand with this you then fit it into the right angle of our gallery and this is a bit of a long job because we've got to make sure that we're gluing down all of the triangles very very carefully so along the right angle of the triangle we add the glue and then we put it into the corner of our gallery So it's really important to let this dry because we need to be able to put our pieces of artwork into our little corner pockets here. So just have a good check that they're all flat down on your gallery. And you need to pop that somewhere to dry now. For this piece of artwork, we're going to need a tray or a box that you can put your piece of paper into and I'm using um, the back piece of paper just you can use whichever color you have but the reason I'm using the black one is I'm going to be using this bright paint and this ping pong ball now you could use a bouncy ball or a marble or something similar and this is squeezy paint can see it's quite bright put the ball into the paint oh lovely <laughs> look at that okay and then we're going to put the ball into the tray and roll it about until we get a pattern on our piece of paper I'm going to take out that ping pong ball with the orange on it and what I thought was this is some white paint with a ping pong ball different one I'm going to see if the white paint can go in too so I'm going to put it sort of in the middle and then I'm going to roll it around there's not quite as much white paint on this one because I wanted to see what would happen and that's the good thing about some of these ideas is it's experimenting to see what you think you want your artwork to look like I actually think that looks fantastic can you see all the little dots of the white paint I like that a lot so I'm going to move my ping pong ball out of the way and I'm going to lift out my piece of work and that is our fifth piece of artwork.
When all your artwork is dry and your gallery is dry and all the little triangle pockets that we put with glue on into the corners so that you can tuck in your artwork, that's all set as well. So now the time to put your artwork into your gallery. So this is my order of my artwork. It doesn't matter which artwork you put in first. It's totally up to you. And what I'm doing is tucking the corners of my finished painting into the little pockets that we made, the triangle pockets. And we glued there and there, which means this side is open, which allows us to hook in and tuck in the pieces of paper that we've made so that they fit snugly. Now, sometimes you might have to trim a little bit off the pieces of paper to make them fit, just because it can be a bit tricky to know exactly how big your pieces of artwork should be. If you're really worried about that, you could also wait and do your gallery first, wait for it to all be dry, and then make sure your plain pieces of paper fit and then do your artwork. As you can see, tucking it bottom and then top, they've all gone into the gallery. So I hope you've enjoyed making your own pocket gallery. It's quite a lot of hard work, but actually I think you probably think it's worth it. Thank you very much for watching.